You're watching Vineyards in English. I'm Vinh Hang from Hanoi. And now let's take a look at the headlines. President Chun Ten Sang meets with revolutionary soldiers who were once held at Hoa Lao Prison. Prime Minister Nguyễn Tân Dũng receives former British Prime Minister Tony Blair. World Bank Director vows loans to Vietnam until 2017. President Chung Tân Sang has said the combat spirit and sacrifice of revolutionary soldiers who were once housed at Hoa La Prison in Hanoi are everlasting examples in the cause for national construction and defense. The state leader made the remarks on July 23rd while visiting the Hoa La Relic site and meeting revolutionary soldiers who were imprisoned by the French colonists from 1930 to 1945. Hoa La Prison was built in 1896 to incarcerate those who fought against the French colonial rule in Vietnam. Many of them lost their lives here due to severe torture. However, there was also a place where revolutionaries nurtured their fighting spirit and experience, expanded their forces and led uprisings. Five of the former prisoners became the general secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam, namely Nguyễn Văn Cử, Trường Trinh, Lê Duẩn, Nguyễn Văn Linh and Đỗ Mười. Hundreds of others also held important positions during Vietnam's struggles for the national independence and reunification. The revolutionaries' service contributed to the success of the August Revolution in 1945, which led to the establishment of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam the same year and the Diet Bien Phu campaign ending the French colonial rule in Indochina in 1954. Talking to the former inmates, President Sang asked them to continue playing as role models for young generations, encouraging their patriotism and national self-reliance. He also requested authorized agencies to well implement the party and the state's social policies designed for those who rendered services for the nation. Prime Minister Nguyễn Tân Dung receives former British Prime Minister Tony Blair in Hanoi on July 23rd. The Vietnamese government leader held the visit by the former British leader. He said the cooperative and friendly ties between Vietnam and Britain have made progress. However, they still fail to match their potential. Prime Minister Dung told his guests that Vietnam wishes to join Britain in enhancing the strategic partnership in all areas, including politics, economics and education. He said Vietnam wants that Britain continues helping the country in poverty reduction, socio-economic infrastructure development and response to climate change. Blair expressed his impression of Vietnam's achievements in socio-economic development, poverty reduction, and realizing Millennium Development Goals. He spoke highly of Vietnam's activities in international integration, economic reform, and efforts to create favorable conditions for domestic and foreign investors. He affirmed his willingness to share with Vietnam's experiences in attracting foreign investment, coping with climate change, and public-private partnership. The World Bank will continue providing preferential loans for Vietnam between now and 2017. World Bank Country Director in Vietnam, Victoria Kua Kua, told National Assembly Vice Chairwoman Nguyễn Thị Kim Ngân in Hanoi on July 23rd. The World Bank attaches importance to cooperation with Vietnam, Kua Kua said. She added, its success in stabilizing the macroeconomy will be a lesson for countries worldwide. She heard the Vietnamese legislature for adopting several laws and resolutions, including a resolution on promoting sustainable poverty reduction by 2020. The guests also vowed to work closely with Vietnamese ministries and agencies to better health care and education services, especially in ethnic minority areas. Ngân spoke highly of the World Bank's support for Vietnam over the past term especially in infrastructure development, poverty reduction, realization of millennium development goals, international economic integration, and technology transfer. Ngân appreciated the Vietnam World Bank National Strategic Partnership Strategy in the 2012-2016 period. 
CEO Sua Kwa Kwa that Vietnam always treasures World Bank's official development assistance and is determined to speed up its disbursement. She suggested the World Bank continue to have Vietnam in policy making via its experience in economic restructuring and loan access. A delegation of the Communist Party of Vietnam visited Nicaragua from July 19 to 22 to further boost ties between the Vietnamese Party and its Nicaraguan partner. The delegation, led by chairman of the Party Central Committee's Commission for Foreign Relations, Hoàng Bình Quân, had a meeting with Politburo member of the ruling Sandinista National Liberation Front Party and speaker of the Nicaraguan Parliament, René Nunes. The host affirmed that Nicaragua always cherishes its friendship and cooperation with Vietnam and expressed his hope for expanded bilateral partnership in economics, trade and investment. The Nicaraguan leader also expressed his wish that the two countries' legislative bodies will intensify their friendship and cooperation in the future. For his part, Guan stated Vietnam's resolve to enhance its ties with Nicaragua, especially in economics, trade and investment. Gwen also held talks with Secretary of the Front Party's International Relations, Jacinto Suarez, during which both sides pledged to continue implementing effectively their cooperation agreements. The two sides exchanged their views on international issues of mutual concern and agreed to continue supporting each other at regional and international forms. The Vietnamese delegation also attended a ceremony marking the 35th anniversary of the success of the Sandinista Revolution, July 19. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung has asked localities and ministries to help victims of tropical storm Ramazun deal with its aftermath and resume their normal lives as soon as possible. The government's leader requests local authorities promptly implement relief work and evacuate local people living in areas hit by the landslides. The Ministry of Health is tasked with keeping the environment's hygiene and ensure the supply of medicine and essential equipment for storm-hit localities if required. The Ministry of Transport is responsible for repairing damaged roads. Other relevant ministries are requested to work hard to restore electricity and communications to locals. Ramazun has killed at least 27 people resulting in flash floods, landslides and lightning strikes in several northern mountainous provinces, including Hà Giang, Lạc Sơn and Lai Châu. It has caused an economic loss of around 5.87 million US dollars, according to the Steering Committee for Flood and Storm Prevention and Control and Search and Rescue. A total of 7,000 houses were submerged or had their roofs blown down, while 4,000 hectares of rice and other subsidy crops were inundated. A conference was held in the central city of Da Nang on July 23rd to give an insight into the anti-corruption laws to journalists who are said to play an important role in the combat against the scorch. At the function, truly held by the Ministry of Information and Communications and the Ministry of Justice, reporters and editors heard in-depth presentations on the law of corruption prevention and control and the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. There are 906 press agencies operating in Vietnam at present, with some 17,000 journalists, thousands of whom pen investigative articles on corruption. Through preliminary information gathered by the press, state agencies have brought a number of serious corruption cases to light. The media have also helped raise people's awareness of the issue by actively publicizing legal regulations and updating the public on the fight against corruption. In other news, Vietnam fetched about 206 million US dollars from exporting animal feed and raw materials in the first half of this year, up 22.1% year on year, according to the General Department of Customs. Vietnamese animal feed and raw materials were shipped to around 10 Asian countries and the US. The products, therefore, were named in the list of Vietnamese key export steps. Notably, they gradually conquer demanding export markets, including the U.S., Japan, and the Republic of Korea. Many animal feed exporters of Vietnam have won big contracts with their partners in the aforesaid markets. 
Exporters in the Mekong Delta are striving to fetch about 1.2 billion U.S. dollars from selling stream abroad in the second half of this year. The figure will help bring the year's export earnings from the product to 2.6 billion U.S. dollars, or an annual rise of 2.2 percent. According to the Steering Committee for the Southwest Region, breeding farms in the Mekong Delta have been expanded by 600,000 hectares, mainly in Cà Mau, Chà Vinh, Tiền Giang, and Long An provinces. The breeders have been advised to focusing on innovating farming techniques and applying environmentally friendly models to produce high-quality products for both domestic and foreign markets. In the first half of this year, they have visited 285,000 tons of shrimp and raked in 1.26 billion US dollars from abroad sales. Last year, Vietnam for the first time earned over 3 billion US dollars from shrimp exports, up 36 percent against the previous year. This has the country secured third place among the world's shrimp exporters. Vietjet Aviation Trust of Company, or Vietjet Air, has launched a route linking central Da Nang City and the Mekong Delta city of Cần Thơ, making it easier for people's travel as well as tourism promotion of the two localities. The route runs three flights a week on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, serving nearly 1,100 passengers. At the opening ceremony, Vietjet Air Vice Chairman Nguyễn Thanh Hùng said, after two years of operation, the low-cost carrier has had a fleet of 15 plants and catered for 17 million passengers, currently accounting for 32 percent of the domestic market. The carrier is taking into consideration a plan to open more new roads, he added. Lê Hùng Dũng, chairman of the Canter Municipal People's Committee Strat, the route have links Canter and Da Nang, the two major economic hubs in the Mekong Delta and Central Region, in the efforts to facilitate tourism and investment there. At present, Vietjet Air is operating 29 international and domestic flights, serving around 25,000 passengers a day. The 2014 summer camp for overseas Vietnamese and young people in Ho Chi Minh City kicked off in the city on July 22nd. The 40 event in my homeland, Blue Sea, attracts 40 overseas Vietnamese Jews from 10 countries and territories, such as Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Belgium, Canada, UK, US, Russia, and Ukraine. They are divided into different teams named after Vietnam's islands. The camp will bring the delegates to landscapes and historical relic sites, helping them understand more the nation's traditions in national construction and defense. They will have a chance to explore the Nkataitu, or amateur singing in the southern region. They will also visit Winningkill School for Sight Impact Children, Navy Brigade 171, and have a nick train with young people in the southern coastal province of Barrier Vuktao. The central highlands province of Lâm Đồng and the central coastal province of Khánh Hòa will continue their affiliation to lure more tourists from Russia in the coming time. Officials of both provinces agreed at a recent meeting that the pair will jointly develop various ecotourism products and participate in the 20th International Trade Fair for Travel and Tourism, slated for Moscow in September. Over the past three years, they have supported each other to provide domestic and foreign visitors with their special tourism products and services. The two provinces have welcomed an increasing number of Russian tourists thanks to launching air routes from Russia to Khánh Hòa. Popular Dala Resort City alone welcomes around 300 to 350 Russian visitors a day during the peak season, lasting from October to April. Phạm Thanh Chup, Deputy Director of the Khánh Hòa Department of Cultural Sport and Tourism, said launching special tours to Dalat and surrounding areas is one of the solutions to attract more holiday makers. And that wraps up our videos. Thanks for watching and see you around.